My personal favorite is Puck Puck the Grosh. I'm going to the bar. Tapes Rolling is made possible in part by a grant from the Dayton Hudson Foundation on behalf of Dayton and Target stores. I'm pushing 40 here. What am I doing this for? This I'm getting. I'm a growing up for crying out loud. Oh, I keep doing this. Well, I have gotten through the uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport, them thinking I was uh, a flight attendant for Northwest. I hear a lot of beam me up, Scotty. I, all I can do is just say, I'm sorry, I can't help you, I'm not Scotty. Bravo, I think our starship is just about ready. We uh, still need a screw for the uh, finishing touches. Okay, so who's the first in line here? I was. You're the very first in line? I was here at 7.30. Wow, that's really early. Uh -huh. Why? My first convention in Minnesota, and I was very excited. <laughs> so what's the, what's the advantage of getting here early? The first one in line. You came, where'd you come from? Um, South Dakota. So you came all the way from South Dakota to be here? Yeah. Why? I wanted to see if I could get both of them to sign this, but Jonathan isn't signing today. I had to see if I can get Marina, maybe. And I don't know. After that. Are you, are you big fans of these particular characters? Yeah, they're my favorite. Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, for one thing, he's really a, Yeah, he's a really, man. really oh. hot. <laughs> That's a good reason. <laughs> oh, I guess I've been a Star Trek fan since I was four or five, though my mom wouldn't let me watch it. I got, uh, the first episode I watched was the episode with the one that sucked all the salt from everybody and was killing people, the kind of free one with suction cup fingertips. And it gave me nightmares, and mom wouldn't let me watch it. Um, I got into the series a couple of years ago. Um, I, I like the, the science fiction aspect, I like the, um, the storylines, the characters. And the second episode I went to watch was the one where the monster ate through rock and melted down everybody, and that, my mom wouldn't let me watch it again for a while. Do you watch the old one too? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tell us more about that. <laughs> the, why I don't, the old one is corny, I think. <laughs> you, don't, you disagree? No, I just, it's a different style is all it is. Just, you know. It would be totally different than what it is now. Like 25 year difference in special effects and everything. But the stories are still really excellent. There's different, the same storylines, morality type stories, but. So, but old Star Trek and Next Generation people can get along? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, see, I like uniforms better here than I do classic uniforms. I wouldn't wear those, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, how many places, how many things let you go and dress up crazy like this and show up in front of people and not think you're strange? You just sit down and enjoy it and then go back to real life later and enjoy it. I, we've all got jobs and other things that we do. We don't live on the Starship and our doors don't go swish swish every time we walk through them. So, it's a reminder that it's just a show. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Uh, since about 78, 1978. Mm -hmm. It's never been as popular as it is now. Really? Yeah, and nobody really, nobody really has an explanation for that. It wasn't all that popular when the show was on the air back in the 60s. I mean, what are some of the more interesting kind of interactions you've had? There are people that get married in uniform. No, I mean really married. I've seen people that have tattoos of the Enterprise. I saw a fellow that had the entire crew of the next generation tattooed on his shoulder. You mean Permanent. Like that over there? What's that? Like the shot over there? Against the wall? How does it feel to be the last person online? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. I'm sure there'll be more though.
the half hands. They are on that line. All right, so let's let them in. Okay, we're gonna. Show your hands, Sam. Just come in, everybody. You and a friend started this? Yeah, my friend Adam Mellon and I started when we were just little kids, and we were the youngest people in history to run a major convention in New York City. You were 14 we years were old? We were 14, and uh, we had about 800 people showed up. How many of these shows do you do a year? We do about 140 all around the United States and Canada. For instance, this weekend we have five conventions running. This is just one of them, believe it or not. Wait, aren't you that guy? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a favorite character? I belong to a group called Celebrity Lookalikes, and uh, I get a phone call from the lady that operates it. She tells me uh, of a gig where I'm needed, and uh, I go and either stand, have pictures taken of me, or I do a little performance. And who are you dressed as? Oh, gee, uh, <laughs> that's a hard guess. <laughs> and so I go in there portraying Captain Kirk with, with the cadence, of course, with a dramatic pause. Can you do a little James T. Kirk for us? I thought I did. Oh, well, wait, wait. I thought I did with a dramatic, unnecessary pause. So that's the key to doing a good Kirk? Another thing is the shoulder shrug, you know. Now, have you ever come face to face with William Chatner? He was here one time, and uh, he, I was out in the audience in costume like this, and I think he might have seen me. And the only thing I can think about, you thought at the time, was going, oh, God, it's another screwball Trekkie. And I hope to God I'm not. <laughs> you know, it's kind of amazing how some people just can't really tell us apart. Klingons, what else are the Klingons? Romulans. Romulans. Oh. Okay. Ferengi. You can tell I know a lot about Star Trek, right? Oh, yeah. Right here, we're gonna see a little bit of everything. The chocolate human orchid. And I don't know about you, but don't go nowhere. I'm Fancy Ray, and it's the Star Trek convention. And tonight, woo! We're gonna get down with it. Oh, my, 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 my. Now, are you a Star Trek fan? I mean, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. The yeah. old Star Trek, though. You know, Captain Kirk was my man, you know, because he got all the babes, you know? So that's what I'm gonna be. I wanna be kind of, you put Captain Kirk and Spock together, ooh, and put a little Liberace in it, and you got me. My, 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 my. <laughs> You built this thing? Yes, I did. Why? When you have a, a big, uh, what should I say, fetish or something for a Star Trek, um, you know, it, it's fun to try to do something like this. Tell us about the signatures. Uh, Michael Dorn, uh, who plays on the new show, uh, The Next Generation, he's the Klingon, he signed it over here. He doesn't have very good grammar. <laughs> and uh, then we have Michelle Nichols, who, this is her station, actually. Um, Lieutenant Hoare is the communication officer of the Enterprise, and this was hers directly behind the captain's chair. Well, I'm hoping that someday it'll be worth something or it can go somewhere um, because of the signatures, because it was part of the history of Star Trek, of being on stage with them, having their signatures, etc. Star Trek fans do not, uh, contrary to beliefs, live at home with their mother and have paper routes at 35 years of age. I do not live at home with my mother, and um, I do have quite a life. Um, this is just an extra part of it, and it was important to me in my life. We need hamburgers. We're Romulans. Um, Gerald is pretty much a next generation Romulan, mm -hmm. as much as we could copy it with the quilted jacket and the square shoulders and there the belt. There aren't many pictures of Romulans no, around. No, there so aren't. It's hard to get reference material. Mm -hmm. Gerald's belt here is um, black vinyl with uh, silver plastic that's been woven through slits. I understand the actual ones are floor mats with holes cut in them. But we haven't found the right floor mat yet. No, we haven't found the right floor mat yet. This started way back with the, with the original Star Trek, where Dr. McCoy's instruments were, as is well documented, salt shakers. And, and that's the fun of doing science fiction costuming, it, trying to see how many people you can fool with something that's very ordinary. Fantastic okay, Okay, third place, we have the third prize. Putting the third place prizes up here, please, ma'am. Our second place winner is the adorable Dr. Crusher. Okay, let's give a walk in round of applause to the stage. So you guys are entering the uh, costume contest? Oh, yeah. We're about yeah. to do over there anytime. And uh, you, you expect to take home some prizes or what? T-shirts would be nice. We Reclose. Very important. Obviously, uh, you're a match set in some way. Of course not. As you can see, I am black on the right half, or he is white on the right half. 
his, he is racially inferior. Nugnach means traditional greeting, what do you want? We're both in the Klingon assault group, CAG. She's our uh, beautiful quadrant commander. Why are these particular characters? Cheap and easy. <laughs> The biggest thing with being a Klingon is having the attitude. You glower, you glare, you swagger. Grunt, groan, spit. Uh. <laughs> I'm a holodeck recreation of a late 20th century Earth teenage male. <laughs> what does that mean? It means I didn't want to spend the money for a real costume. They threaten. <laughs> they intimidate. <laughs> Some people have trouble getting out of it. I can, I usually can swing back and forth between a Klingon persona and, and being a regular normal. Everyone has to have a hobby that they absolutely love to dig into. Some people are sports fanatics. You know, they've got to have the team t-shirt, the team hat, the team starter jacket. Well, we have Star Trek in and the, yeah. it's, it's just different. Thank you. When I was about eight or nine years old, I used to buy the Star Trek books. They were only 95 cents, so I'd wash dishes uh, for my mom and collect uh, as many quarters as I could and go out and buy Star Trek books. And then I'd uh, collect the model kits and I'd build them. And um, when I got to be a little older, I got my mom's Super 8 movie camera and used to make Star Trek movies in my garage. And I'd blow up these model kits. And I wasn't really aware of how much they would be worth until I became a serious collector, which was when I was around 21 or 22. And How much do you think your collection is worth? At this point, anywhere between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars. Collecting isn't, you know, for me so much an investment, you know, in money and something that I want to sell as it is a hobby. It's more of a way of life, and I can sit back in my apartment and look back and say, "Yeah, cool." I enjoy it more just for having. What's the one thing you'd really like to have that you don't have? Uh, the one thing I'd really like to have, ooh. Something that there is only one of. Um, I know a lady here in St. Paul who has Leonard Nimoy's life mask, and there's only one of those. Actually, I've got three life masks of Leonard Nimoy and two of William Shatner. May I, please? We need this for the television show. We'll put it right back. This is your collection? Uh, there's three volumes to this. And this is my collection in this three volumes. Just like that, so the glare air. Yeah, just OK. You should explain why we're not showing your face. I don't particularly want to have my mug shot for all the dealers. I don't want to advertise myself. That's the last thing I want. You mentioned over the phone some of the more bizarre and obscure things that you actually have. Now, you insist on calling them bizarre. I missed it. Uh, and I keep telling you, as a Star Trek fan, there is nothing that is bizarre but there are some unusual things. Well, basically, I collect anything that says Star Trek or Star Trek Next Generation, everything from newspaper clippings to toys, posters, fights, mugs. 
Then I made a decision somewhere along the line just to buy everything. It reduced a lot of stress on me. I didn't have to decide should I buy it or not. If I buy everything, then I just buy it. All right, this is Fancy Rain. I'm here with my main man from Star Trek The Next Generation. Who's the prettiest? Wait a minute. Well, news crews, you know, I understand that they need to get the interesting looking people. Unfortunately, that's what people only see. Well, when I first got into Star Trek fandom, you know, I met doctors, lawyers, teachers, professional people. You know, I probably would never have met them, you know, outside of Star Trek. The only thing we have in common, some of us, is Star Trek. Uh, I'm uh, an alien. Uh, my name is Anatoly Vladimirovich Intraligator. Uh, I'm a legal alien from Russia. Well, I just designed um, some, my idea for communicators. Each communicator goes with the rank of the personnel. First time I saw Star Trek, it was accidental flippings through channels and TV. Could not speak any English. Then I've designed a phaser for the future. Instead of the big bulking things, they have it's just a small ring on the, on the finger. So did you learn English from Star Trek? I would just sit. There it's like, like this, and tape the show, replay, look in the dictionary, what this word means, uh, what that word means. So I've seen some of uh, episodes probably 10, 20 times, just because I had to translate back in Russian to understand what's going on. Well, I'm hoping to send these to Star Trek and hopefully get them on air, so I have you know, ideas for them that they can use and stuff, especially my ships. Can you say something uh, Star Trekian in Russian for us? Boy, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's hard to translate, except live long and prosper. Let's see, how would it be in Russian? Oh, boy, I don't know. It's hard to say it, you know? I wouldn't make any sense, I'm afraid. We wouldn't know the difference. Oh, живите долго. Okay. Tell us about uh, some unusual things you've done with Star Trek in school. Translated a couple Star Trek phases into Latin. Well, you can get rough approximations like transmittere, which means to send through, but you can fudge a bit and say beam up. So, me transmite sursum uh, caledoni would be beam me up, Scotty. How do you use that? Uh, <laughs> Sometimes to annoy teachers on tests. Everybody finds different things about the show that they like. Some people are drawn to the special effects and the fact that it's on a spaceship and it's in the future. Uh, a lot of us appreciate the fact that it presents a very positive view of the future. Uh, it doesn't show the Earth being devastated by wars. It shows us having finally figured out how to solve our worst problems. Uh, the original series addressed a lot of issues that were hot in the 60s, uh, desegregation issues, uh, the politics of the 60s. And uh, if you look at the episodes of The Next Generation, the show that's on the air now, they're addressing a lot of the issues that are current for the 90s. Uh, the wars in the Middle East, uh, different things that are happening uh, here in the U.S., uh, moral issues. and they can disguise it as a science fiction plot on some planet out on the other end of the galaxy or something and make it a lot easier for the uh, audience to uh, enjoy, but still gives them something to think about later on. The organization that's running this must be making money hands over fist, waiting in line for a room of overpriced products to then walk in and see snippets from programs all for the price of it costs for myself and my son $27 is outrageous. What do you think about people, if people are having a good time, they're willing to part with their money? That's fine, you know, uh, a sucker is born, etc., etc. Why did you come? Because my son, who is now walking away out of <laughs> come on, over here. wanted to come. I remember the old series. Uh, which I like, but never to the point of being a uh, fan to the extent that some of these people apparently are. But I think who's ever running this uh, should be taking the task, especially for the inflated prices. I think for the money that people spend to get a ticket, I think they get a wonderful show. And I mean, you can hear them laughing in the background. This, I mean, for me, I think it's probably one of the better buys around in terms of entertainment. But it's a commercial enterprise, so I mean, it's a business. On a commercial side, it's really what's kept Star Trek alive between the period of when the, uh, the first series ended and the, and the first movie uh, began. And, and I think commercially, if it wasn't for the conventions and this type of fan movement, there would have never been a next generation. There wouldn't have been a Deep Space Nine. There certainly wouldn't have been uh, the tremendous success of the film. My luck, another Klingon.
So what is it about these conventions that appeals to you? I like the philosophy, and it's fun. I enjoy it. What's the philosophy for you? Nonviolence and trying to get along with everybody, regardless of race. Somehow that sort of fits for me. There are Romulans around. Besides, it gives me an excuse to act like a nut and my wife can't yell at me. So do people actually get together and speak Klingon? Yeah, they do. There's like the Klingon language camp that takes place now. I think this will be the second year. There are people all over the country writing things about the Klingons, coming up with with history and culture and poetry and... Translating Shakespeare. Right. <laughs> most people do it in fun. Most people now have their own characters, their own creativity. It's not I'm Spock or Kirk, which is fine. But we've seen people that there are people who really have kind of gone over the edge. I mean, it's a very violent society, but it's also based on honor, integrity, honesty, loyalty, duty, all those things that have sort of gone out of fashion with, with us lately. I have a character that's half human, half Klingon. And it's a way of exploring yourself because if you interject things from your real life in it, then you find out what stuff you like. Like my character, I, I like herbal tea. My character does too, and I put that in there. So how, how big a part of your life is, is the Klingon culture and Star Trek? Um, what it means a lot to me is it's like it's like with the fandom. You get to know people become your second family. If you don't have family here, it's a family. Thank you. Tell me about how the celebrities are involved in the conventions. Well, the celebrities, as you might imagine, they're 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 hired to appear at conventions, and some of them enjoy it more than others. But you know, it's a way for them to earn a living on top of the show. So particularly for the original series members uh, who had some problems with uh, typecasting when the original series went off, the conventions really became their major source of income. Autograph line? Autograph? I don't know about Autograph line? Uh, just, just for instance, at our big show in Pasadena, uh, about a month and a half ago, we, we, we had an earthquake on the Sunday, and there were about 5,000 people there, and there was no panic. People probably didn't want to give up their place online. That was it, yeah, God forbid. Even an earthquake, yeah, the place was really rattling. <laughs> long line to get Marina's autograph. Well, she waited. I didn't. Uh-uh. I sat Two down. <laughs> I'm lazy. I he saved down. my spot, though. Yep. See, actually, I was the one who got in line first, and then she came, and then he came, and then his father came. And so how long yeah. did you so wait? I'm the real hero here. <laughs> oh, don't be shy. Oh, maybe 18, 19 hours. <laughs> so what do you think of her in person after seeing her on TV? Um, Whoa, way different. <laughs> yeah. Really? She wears a big wig. Hair. 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 <laughs> I like this picture better, though. It's her. Ooh. Very nice. This looks like a lot of work, Marina. Well, uh, thank you so much. It's not. It's actually quite fun for the first thousand or so. <laughs> Did you make this? I'll go myself. Yep. From scratch. Ta-da! She's made out of porcelain. God, she's beautiful. We could sell her on QVC. There we go. <laughs> and yes. take two. Okay, do, you, do you have any insights into why Star Trek is so popular? Well, I think it's the philosophy of Star Trek. I think the author really had... <laughs> I'm trying to spend money, but I'm not having much success. What do you want to spend money on? Anything I don't have. What do you have? Everything. <laughs> okay, ask the question again. Tell me, why do, you, do you have any insights into why Star Trek is so popular? Yeah, I think there's a lot of lonely people there sitting at home, and, uh, you know, they're jumping into the future, and we got to take care of the problems here today, you know? And that's what I'm here, fancy way, spreading that love and joy and happiness for the things of today. So you don't need the next generation. you got 1994, ooh, and I'm knocking on your door. And if you want fancy way, tune in to Channel 6, and you'll get some more. Ow, my, 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 bye. I mean, I, I think it's a phenomenon of American popular culture. There's no question about it. I mean, not only is it good entertainment, but it, what other show could you have that could draw thousands and thousands of people every weekend to get together. It's, it's really singular. I find something like this. How are you doing? Yeah. Look at all that stuff you got. That's terrible.
Tapes Rolling was made possible in part by a grant from the Dayton Hudson Foundation on behalf of Dayton's and Target stores. This program was produced by KTCA, a Minnesota original.